Let's install KVM on Ubuntu 22.04. KVM stands for Kernel-Based Virtualization Virtual Machines and it's the Linux hypervisor. If you intend to run Linux virtual machines on your Linux host, it's going to have a significant performance advantage over other hypervisors such as VirtualBox. But before starting with the installation itself, we have to make sure that our processor supports virtualization. To do that, let's open the terminal and we're going to use the lscpu command. lscpu gives all kinds of information on our processor. But since we're only interested in virtualization, we're going to append to it grep virtualization. And as you can see, I got virtualization vtx. That's because my processor is an Intel processor. If your processor is an AMD processor, you might get something a bit different along the lines of AMD-V, something like that. If you didn't get any output, you're unfortunately out of luck as it seems that your processor doesn't support virtualization. Now, notice that being able to support virtualization is not enough. And you have to make sure in your BIOS that virtualization is enabled. The BIOS interface is different for different manufacturers. So I can show you one way that will always work. But you'll have to go into your BIOS settings and look for something like VT-D, something like that. And make sure that it's enabled. Once you're done with that, we're ready to go on with the installation itself. So first, we want to make sure that our system is up to date. Then we want to apt install QMU KVM. Now, you might notice that there is no auto completion for this package, and I want to explain why. If we go to the Ubuntu Packages site, and look for QMU KVM, we can see that it's a virtual package. So it's not an actual package, but a virtual one. What does it mean? It means that it's not a real package, but only a placeholder for several different packages. And these are the packages that actually provide this virtual package. So why do we need this virtual package? The reason is that different platforms implement this package differently. So for example, if you have an ARM system, there is a specific implementation for it. Whereas if you have an x86 platform, the implementation is different. Using the virtual package, we can always follow the same installation procedure. But the package that will actually be installed depends on the platform you use. And since virtual packages are not real packages, they are not part of the repository and are not supported by auto completion. Anyway, let's go ahead and run this command. Great. We now need libvirt, which is a virtualization API, and we need it to do anything useful with KVM. So we actually need two packages here, so let's go ahead and install them. Great. The next step is adding our user to the KVM group. We now need to restart our system for the group changes to take effect. OK, we're back. Let's open the terminal again. And let's list the groups our user belongs to now. And we can see that our user now belongs to KVM. And it also belongs to libvirt. So this step was successful and we're good to go. To make sure that KVM was correctly installed, we can use the virsh command. And right now we don't have any virtual machines running, but KVM itself responds as expected. We're also going to install virt manager, which is a graphical interface to KVM and can make life more convenient. And we can now open Virt Manager from the Ubuntu Apps menu. And if you see here QMU KVM, it means that everything worked correctly. Let's try to use our installation by installing a virtual machine. I'll be installing Ubuntu 22.04 virtually on top of my Ubuntu 22.04 physical host. So I already have the ISO file. Here it is. And let's create a new virtual machine. I 
I'm going to use local install media as I'm going to use my local ISO file. And let's browse to find this file. And we can see that it was correctly identified as Ubuntu 22.04. We need to decide how much memory and CPUs we want to allocate. And we also need to decide how much disk space we want to allocate for the virtual disk. Let's name our virtual machine and create it. And here we have a virtual instance of Ubuntu right on top of our physical one.